Ready? Okay. Hello. This light thing is. This one is off. Camera is off. Okay. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, have you ever sat uh, and flipped through TV channels, uh, watching CNN News, Fox News? Uh, you're wondering who's speaking the truth. After a while, you realize they're both twisting the truth, uh, so-called fake news, to give the their opinion of what let's see what's happening uh, so i'm the president of milton medical uh, we've seen more than a hundred thousand covid swabs uh, we've uh, given more than ten thousand vaccines uh, and we've given 200 monoclonal antibodies so what i would like to share with you is our personal experience what we have seen on the ground what are the different aspects of this disease uh, which has a lot of hidden surprises and some of them in the coming year how can we prepare for it what can we do in the future uh, uh, and equip ourselves uh, to fight this COVID. Uh, the first thing we must realize is if we stay healthy there's a less you having an ideal body weight taking vitamin D3 every day, uh, zinc, vitamin C, these things build up your immune system. Uh, and so they don't have any risks and they're worth uh, taking them on a regular basis, exercising on a regular basis, can decrease your risk. Uh, if you get a COVID, you might not get as sick as otherwise. Uh, of course, the biggest controversy today is uh, vaccination, what to do about vaccination, non-vaccinators, booster vaccine. Uh, and there's a lot of confusion. Uh, to me, what happens is if you, I have not seen a person who had the vaccine who died. Everybody who got the vaccine, even if they got sick, they were not as sick, they were in the hospital for two or three days and they were out. Uh, so the risk of hospitalization the risk of serious illness and the risk of dying goes down significantly. So it's a no-brainer. Everybody should get the vaccine. Uh, I, you know, uh, you read a lot of times people say it's a political decision, but I don't see this as a political decision. It's a personal decision. You have to decide for yourself whether you want to have the vaccine or not. Uh, if you do get it, your chances of dying from COVID or going on a respirator, or going on for, for dia dialysis, those things go down significantly. Uh, I cannot remember a patient who had the vaccine who went on dialysis uh, from the patients we have treated. And uh, we have treated a lot of patients with COVID. So, so that would be the first take home message is get the vaccine. If you've not done it, you should do it. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the time the flu is coming around, so you can get the flu vaccine and the COVID vaccine at the same time, according to the CDC now. Uh, the vaccine also leads into the realm, realm of boosters. Who should get the booster? Who should not get a booster? Uh, it'd be nice if everybody got the booster. Uh, either it decreases the risk uh, of getting sick um you know a 50 year old guy doesn't want to be sick just as a 72 year old guy doesn't want to get sick so everybody in my mind should get the booster uh um, so i got the booster uh and, and uh, you know it did not have any major side effects to me so i recommend it to everybody um, the one caveat is we had a couple of cases, even after the booster, they did get COVID infection. So even after the third booster, they did get infection, but the infection is much milder. 
which brings me to the second part of this uh, vaccinated scenario. The symptoms of people who have been vaccinated are different uh, than the people who have not been vaccinated. The symptoms have changed. Symptoms are more like coughing, sneezing, running nose, allergy-like symptoms uh, the first day or two. The second day, they'll get a mild headache, a mild headache on the second day. Uh, and, and then by the third day, they'll get some chest congestion, uh, fever. So the symptoms have changed, a little nausea, but you can almost feel like the allergy-like symptoms. So what happens to a lot of these people is that they think they have allergies and they go around for two or three days with the symptoms, then they realize that, that maybe it's something else. So that what I would like you to know is if you have any symptoms, which are unusual, um, don't think, oh, just allergies acting up. Uh, it's better to be safe, careful, and be checked out. Maybe it is allergies acting up, but maybe it's covert. So a lot of people will say, you know, you know, why should I get tested? There is no treatment for COVID. Uh, what can I do? And here is the second most important thing. Uh, now we have available monoclonal antibodies. These antibodies will prevent you from having complications from COVID. It help uh, re you recover faster from the COVID. And I think it might also prevent you from getting the post-COVID syndrome or the long haulers. Uh, so it makes a significant improvement in preventing uh, complications of COVID. I've had the privilege of treating patients who call in, they're sick today, they get the antibiotic the next day, and they're feeling much better. So it, the sooner you make the diagnosis, the sooner you get the test, the sooner you can get the monoclonal antibodies. Uh, the window of opportunity is only about 10 days. Hence, it's important as soon as you get the symptoms, get tested, get the monoclonal antibodies. Uh, we're lucky in a sense that we have an infusion center and we've been able to give this monoclonal antibodies to a lot of people. Uh, we have given almost 200 monoclonal antibodies uh, and had no side effects of any significance, uh, except a lot of people want to have blankets because they feel cold when they're getting the monoclonal antibodies. So, you know, if you ever have to do it, bring a blanket with you. Most hospitals can give it too. So it's, uh, it's a great thing to do. Uh, and the other secret which people don't want to talk about is if you have somebody in your house uh, who's a high risk, uh, who's exposed to you, and who has this monoclonal antibody, they should get the monoclonal antibodies too. It can prevent illness. There's a study from a nursing home where people who get monoclonal antibodies, 30 to 40%, to even 50% reduction in getting COVID-19 and getting the complications of COVID-19. So if you have a parent or grandparent who's 82 years old and your kid brings it home and, and now you have the monoclonal antibodies for yourself, your grandparents can get it too to prevent them from getting the complications of uh, COVID. So it's used not only for treatment, but it can also be used to prevent getting COVID-19. So that is a part of the story which has not been told. And that was the one reason I wanted to uh, talk about it, is it can really make a dramatic improvement in your recovery. It reduces the risk of going into the hospital. Uh, and it reduces the risk of getting the long COVID. That is uh, speculation on my part, but I think you know, if you get better sooner, the less chance of getting the post-COVID. It also decreases your ability to transmit this to others. See, if you get the monocal antibodies, your, your viral load goes down quicker and faster. And so you de decrease the risk of giving it to others. 
So, so those are the, th the things which are common with monoclonal antibodies, with the vaccination, with the booster. You can get the booster with the flu shot. Uh, you should also think of getting immunized. Uh, and with all those mandates around, uh, it obviously makes more sense. Um, uh, it is the single most important thing uh, to get the vaccine. I know some people are afraid uh, because it's a new thing, but the, we have given so many and, ne and not have a problem. Some people pass out at the side of a needle, but I think they'll pass out at the side of any needle. So it's got nothing to do with the COVID needle. And some people have watched so much TV, fear of COVID, the sweating, the, you know, the heart rate goes up because they're getting injected with this unknown material. Uh, and if you look across the world, uh, there really has not been significant problems, significant problems with the vaccine. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's more effective than the flu vaccine. It's more effective than the pneumonia vaccine. And it's a lot safer than a lot of these other vaccines. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was recently uh, reading an article in the uh, New England Journal, I think it was a week ago. And I have a slide which I can share it with you. Um, so, you know, you can study this slide f carefully yourself. Uh, and the New England Journal is one of the most prestigious medical journals in the United States. Um, and uh, uh, if you look at the slides, uh, I wanted to look at what causes more reaction from the vaccine. Um, the, what you'll see like in the two thirds of the way down, if you shift, you'll see lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy is enlarged lymph nodes. Those go up after you get the vaccine. Uh, so when, when you get the COVID vaccine, you'll have enlarged lymph nodes, a lot of times in your armpits. That's why they recommend women don't get a mammogram after they have the COVID-19 uh, vaccine because the mammogram would be you know, painful, tender. It might show those lymph nodes. Uh, so that is the one thing which goes up significantly by, with getting the vaccine compared to getting the COVID disease. Uh, so, so the other thing we hear a lot about is uh, myocarditis, you know, inflammation of the heart. You hear, you know, vaccine causes inflammation of the heart. Uh, but why are they saying that to you? Because when they say it, you'll click on the TV and watch it and their ratings will go up. Because uh, yes, you get myocarditis, inflammation of the heart with the vaccine. But they're not telling you the other part of the story, that inflammation of the heart, if you look at the numbers, is 11 per 100,000 for COVID, 3 per 100,000 for the vaccine. So if you get the COVID, your chance of getting inflammation of the heart is four times greater than if you get the vaccine. So, so, so you, you know, you have to analyze the, the whole picture. If you just look at the uh, half a picture, it causes confusions. Uh, so, 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 so to really have the answers, I think you should look into the depth of these things. Uh, so, so that is the main, one of the biggest fears people have is that, in, you know, rapid heart rate, palpitations, myocarditis, but the risk is four times more if you get the COVID. And this Delta variant is so contagious that I think almost 90% of the population will either get the disease or they'll have to be vaccinated uh, or do something else. So, uh, and if you look at all the other things, uh, the risks are much higher with getting the disease. Uh, and you know, it's still killing. We lost a patient a couple of days ago. She's a great lady. She, you know, she unfortunately she did not get vaccinated and she passed away. So uh, it, it's still, you know, it can hurt people and, you know, kill people. And then you wonder, why didn't I get this, you know? So, so uh, that's what I would encourage. And if you have any questions about this or anything else COVID related, uh, feel free to ask uh, the questions at this time. 
Uh, but before I do that, I, you know, sometimes it's good to look at other things. You know, the, the COVID is not the end of the world. There are other things beyond COVID. So in the same New England Journal, I read that if you take a salt substitute instead of salt, your risk of heart attack, stroke goes down by 10 to 20 percent. So, so it was a, you know, a recent study uh, from China. Uh, you know, I mean, they do good things in China also. So, uh, so we should look into that. And if you have concerns, you should really think if you're above the age of 60 to use salt substitutes instead of sodium chloride in your diet. It reduces the blood pressure, reduces the risk of heart attack, reduces the risk of stroke. So with these few words, uh, any questions, any comments, uh, we'll send them in. We do have a couple questions. First of all, Gail Gorman says hi. Hello. <laughs> um, Janine wants to know that if she's still testing positive since January, has antibodies, she's scared to get the vaccine, what is the research that was done on this? They said to wait three months after having COVID, what should she do? I mean, that's a recommendation that once you get the COVID, you should wait three months before you get the vaccine. So, so that is the CDC guidelines at the present time. And, you know, these guidelines can change. But currently, that is the recommendation. And the reason is uh, because the monoclonal antibodies, if you get the vaccine after that, you might have more side effects uh, from the vaccine. You would know yourself. You would know yourself. Yeah, I feel different than yesterday. I feel a little weird. Uh, something is different. Something is going on, which is, you know, you would know, you know, nobody else can know it as much as you would. So once you think there's something which is not 100%, uh, then that is the time that you start thinking, hey, you know what? Maybe this is uh, COVID, you know. Uh, Um, I, you know, the booster shot is effective against all the variants at the present time. It does not, to the, the few that we have given, first of all, it's too early to know from the U.S. data, but if you look at the data from Israel, uh, where they've given a lot of booster shots, they found that the hospitalizations and disease got less, even with the Delta variant. But my feeling is that it is not as effective against Delta as others. Um, so it's the best game in town. You can still get uh, COVID after the booster, uh, but the risk of hospitalization death goes down. Uh, we would like to have a vaccine which has the booster, uh, the Delta specific uh, antibodies in it, but that hasn't happened yet. Uh, and the other reason is we, we're not doing a lot of testing to whether it's Delta variant or this variant. So it's a lot of uh, some degree of, uh, you know, guesswork going on there. Um, one more question. Can we get the flu shot and the COVID vaccine? Yes. And it depends. If you if you close by, you can do them separately. Uh, but if you live far away, then you can do them at the same time. The CDC recommends that you can get them at the same time. But you know, uh, you could do either way. Uh, Okay, uh, if you're still having memory loss, that is the post-COVID syndrome. Um, you know, um, I don't remember if it'll go away. <laughs> you know, I don't, we don't know. We really don't know, uh, but hopefully it should go away. And I think you also, you know, uh, 
there has been some study of using drugs like fluvoxamine for the brain fog with these people. Uh, and some studies have shown that it has helped, but you know, the data is not out there yet. Uh, I also saw something that they're doing in UK about using vit vitamin A for uh, loss of smell. So, so these are things which are ongoing and it's an evolving field. Definitely. Uh, diabetes is a huge, huge risk factor for COVID. So you should definitely consider booster if you have diabetes. And how do you test and differentiate between the Delta virus and COVID-19? That's done in the lab by testing, genome testing, what kind of genomes it, it has. But the testing is not as vigorous in the U.S. as it's in U.K. So they have a much better feel over there about the Delta variant. Here we're just, uh, you know, projecting on data. Uh, so, you know, we should be doing more, but it's not being done. And if I test positive, should I keep getting retested? How long will it stay positive? The CDC guidelines say you don't need to be retested because it can stay positive for 30 days, 60 days, sometimes even longer. Uh, and they don't feel it's contagious at that point. Uh, and if you want to be retested, it's not recommended, but if you want to do it, you know, uh, it's okay to do it, you know. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but this is the guidelines. And, you know, if you had it, you want to know, am I going to go infect my grandparents? Let me get tested. You know, you can get tested, but they don't feel it's contagious at that point. Uh, however, we don't know everything about the COVID. It's still an unfolding mystery. And if I want to get the monoclonal antibodies, but I'm not a patient in Middletown Medical, can I still get them and what would I do? You, you can still get it. Uh, you can call the office, have a telemed the same day, and the goal is to get it as soon as possible. And that is the one thing which would make a huge difference in, uh, you know, in your health. Okay. I think that's all the questions. All right. Well, thank you for listening. And, you know, any other comments, let me know. Okay.